Welcome to HSE TV's Weekly Roundup. In this week's program, calm before another storm in Hong Kong. Government and student leaders agree to talks. Burma's freedom of press on test. HSE TV interviews lawyer Robert San Ang in Rangoon. And will Nepal's Truth and Reconciliation Commission lead to impunity for war crimes? HSE TV questions activist Mandira Sharma. HSC TV's Weekly Roundup, I'm Josefina Bergsten. We start in Hong Kong, where a relative calm has descended over the Occupy Central areas. This follows a dramatic week that witnessed large crowds gathering to demand true democracy and to protest police heavy-handedness. The scale of Occupy Central, a civil disobedience movement, took everyone by surprise when it was launched on September 28, on the back of a week of student protests outside government headquarters in Admiralty, on Hong Kong Island. Police brutality, meant to disperse the protesters, had the opposite effect and instead drew tens of thousands of young and old to the streets who occupied not only Central but also areas of Causeway Bay and Mong Kok in protest. The protesters demanded democratic election for the chief executive in 2017. Hong Kong has been promised universal suffrage but when the central government in Beijing laid out the framework for elections Restrictions were put in place to ensure any candidate not deemed Beijing-friendly enough would be vetoed. The student protesters also demanded the resignation of the unpopular chief executive C. Y. Lung, who, in their view, is not acting in the interest of Hong Kong people, but is acting as a puppet for the Central Communist Party government. The Hong Kong government has agreed to talks between Chief Secretary Carrie Lam and the students to be held today, October 10. Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yun and Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Raymond Tam will join the Chief Secretary at the meeting. In the lead up to the talks, student leaders have announced that the protests will continue until real progress has been achieved. Federation of Students Deputy Leader Lester Shum has warned that the dialogue would end if the government took action to clear the protest sites or fail to guarantee the safety of the demonstrators. Occupy Central has become internationally known as the world's politest protest movement. Not a single shop window has been broken and no car set on fire, things inevitable in such protests across the world. Students have been cleaning up their own trash and have organized recycling stations within the occupied areas. Visitors to the protest areas have been amazed at how peaceful and collaborative the atmosphere has been throughout. This has contrasted starkly with the aggressive attitudes of many anti-Occupy protesters who have physically attacked and even sexually molested some Occupy protesters. Police have been accused of failing to intervene and of colluding with the anti-Occupy protesters, some of whom are believed to be triad members. AHSC TV will continue to report on the protests in Hong Kong. to Burma. The Magwe Divisional Court has reduced the sentence of four journalists and the CEO of the Unity Journal from 10 to 7 years imprisonment with hard labor following an appeal, according to their lawyer Robert San Ang. The defendants will now take their appeal to the Supreme Court and ask for a full acquittal of the five in the capital Naypyidaw within the next two weeks. The journalists were initially sentenced to 10 years in prison with hard labor by a Pakauko Township Court on July 10. The court accused the five of breaking the State Secrets Act for reporting allegations that a Burmese military facility in the Magwe Division Township was being used to manufacture chemical weapons. Burmese media and rights activists are outraged and many are concerned about worsening press freedom under President Thein Sein's government. A number of criminal cases have been brought against media organizations in recent months. This is all the more unexpected since, as recently as 2012, the government began to lift restrictive media laws, such as pre-publication censorship and a ban on daily newspapers that were in force under the previous military dictatorship. For more on this story, we speak with the lawyer defending the journalists, Robert San Ang. 
Natanza le wini bimuji ama le ono tayelo wa kapasa na sali ya tana mududi ya bo muji chocho uwa tilo lobyo sweso tu gale tu tu wone tu sweso ya mogu ya amuru ya matati kan kagwe jite na re nenga no tamra yunga njai mujo ula ton lama yeto vi pepo re sa ya tuwa di muo tisao la gera tisao ha dadu lenne tolo da mashi dilo dadu lenne tolo po diwe bi tisao de sayo mo ba u no era ja mo lo chowe da da le mashi dilo pao cha mu le to zong di ya mashi ba u lo tu ko nga yo shi ma pyo ba e ara di de ring ye da mu wa nai ngai no ye long jong ye ro tia u ri so mo ye ro ti jin e ri jan ta ya ye ko ba ma ti ga je si de ya mashi u ara မုန်းနာယုံတော့ဖြစ်တဲ့ပုဂ္ဂိုလ်ကိုရင်တရားယုံကတားမြေတားတဲ့နေမီဟိုဝင်နေလို့ပြောတယ်အဲ့တော့
but reconciliation is not providing amnesty to everyone, even to those involved in serious human rights violation. Uh, reconciliation as understood by the political party leaders and those who are in power is very narrow. They have been projecting reconciliations as if it is mediation between victims and uh, perpetrators. So a reconciliation without truth, without justice, without reparation is an insult to the victims. And it really uh, you know, re-strengthens the impunity in the country and the cycle of violence in the country. We have already had a number of uh, truth commissions, type of commission of inquiries, even in the past. None of those uh, commissions really brought any fruit. They did not even um, um, you know, bring any, any changes uh, in, in, in our attempt to improve human rights uh, situation. Uh, rather, uh, these commissions helped to diffuse the popular demand for justice and strengthen impunity and weaken rule of law and people's uh, confidence uh, in, in the government institutions. So we don't want to repeat the same mistake that we made in the past. Rather, we would like to learn uh, from our mistakes and, and commit ourselves not to repeat the same mistake. Uh, unfortunately, uh, government, those political parties who are in power uh, are uh, trying to um, silence the victims, human rights activists who have been campaigning uh, for the rights uh, of, of, the, of the, the victims of human rights violations in Nepal. Uh, and we believe, I, I uh, you know, um, believe that uh, demanding justice is not uh, a demand for uh, revenge. Um, we really want to know what really happened, who were involved in committing human rights violations, what was the institution's involvement, um, whether there was a policy, uh, and then, uh, you know, based on the evidences collected, have some prosecutions as well, if evidences allow. We also do not want to see, I don't want to see anyone being victim of prosecutions based on the political motivation. Uh, it has to be really uh, uh, done on the basis of the evidences. Uh, so evidences uh, have to be collected. There should be uh, investigations uh, with the genuine interest to collect the uh, evidences. So if there are no evidences, then the process should provide uh, ways for providing amnesty, uh, or pardoning anyone who are involved in, uh, in human rights uh, violations uh, during conflict. But without any process, without investigations, without actually knowing what really happened, uh, it's impossible. So uh, I really believe that the day will come in Nepal as well uh, where victims of human rights violation will get justice and we have a system uh, where no one uh, will be above the law and every citizen of Nepal will be equal before the law. It is not the theoretical uh, battle. It is not just the legal battle. I think this is the moral value that we carry and cherish for. That is all for this weekly roundup. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.